We left off with all the Joes dying on the floor as the container of mass device crystals started giving off some kind of toxic fumes. And though I'm positive he was on the floor passed out with the rest of them, Snake Eye's wolf pal rushes over to get a wet rag for blonde Scarlet here. Liquid can filter fumes! <laughs> I have nothing to add to this. The chick races out of there with the canister, then swerves sharply and physics does the rest. I, I guess. Wait, so it was also a bomb? I'm so confused. Oh, but at least I know that her name is Covergirl, and knowing is... important. Also, this brings the total number of lives saved by the wolf to a substantially higher figure than the total saved by, say, Duke. Dr. Vandermeer tests his crazy new mass device, which only uses two of the three required rare elements, because he's just a badass like that, I guess. He tests it on Gung Ho's rifle, which... Well, the implication here is that it's a bit of an intimate possession. Thankfully, we stop short of finding out just how intimate. The experiment fails, but more importantly, we've killed a minute or two of valuable screen time. Good work, everyone. Now Vandermeer directs the team to fall into a burning ring of fire in South America to gather the third element. Be careful, he tells them. When you find the element, it'll be surrounded by hot lava. The floor is lava. Hey, I played that game as a kid, too. The Joes receive a scrambled message from Stalker. You can tell it's scrambled because it's split into 16 pieces, which are all jumbled up meaning that unless Cobra has a puzzle-adept eight-year-old on their team, there's no way anyone can possibly decipher this message. He says that the team have been ordered by the President and the Joint Chiefs to surrender. And now, between showing us a picture of South America and saying the phrase Joint Chiefs, this episode has officially satisfied federal requirements for educational television. Now we can just sit back and sell toys for the remaining 20 minutes. We then cut to Cobra Commander and Destro, oh, they must have had that eight-year-old after all, watching this conversation and eating dinner. There's a bite out of that turkey leg, but Cobra Commander's mask is still on. That should not be as distracting to me as it is. Destro refuses to celebrate their victory, so Cobra Commander celebrates by himself, pitting that giant barbarian dude against some big killer robot thing he just had lying around. Said it before and I'll say it again, this guy has the life that I want. Back at G.I. Joe HQ, we find out that there was no surrender at all. This was all an elaborate hoax using toy jets and tanks that your parents could buy for you and put together themselves. In fact, tell your parents right now that they can buy you toy jets and tanks. Lots of them! So it's off to South America as we cram about 40 guys into each helicopter. The code name for this mission is, wait for it, Operation Big Lift. Uh-huh. We also meet Wild Bill, who punctuates every third syllable with a not at all annoying, Yee-haw! I've met real-life people from Texas, though, and that really is how they talk. So, one point in the accuracy column, I suppose. They almost get the meteor thing out of the volcano when, oh no, it's Cobra! Destro, with those headphones, it's more like DJ Destro, cooks up some elaborate plan that takes about 10 minutes to explain, but really just boils down to shoot the volcano. Back at Cobra HQ, Cobra Commander throws a huge hissy fit for no very good reason, and the Baroness suggests that maybe the whole G.I. Joe surrender thing is a trick. <sighs> Pretty and smart. Cobra Commander almost destroys New York City, using up the last of their mass device elements in the process. But before the beam reaches the Big Apple, Duke's girlfriend spills some water on it. So I guess that makes two pretty and smart ladies, except, well, she doesn't have the glasses or the accent. Uh, that accent. <clears throat> Sorry. So back at the volcano. Uh oh, what we've got here is a game of dirty pool with a capital D for Destro. Wait, isn't the D for dirty? So the Joes have this great idea to shoot at their enemies instead of just hanging out and waiting for them to escape with the element. Way to go, Joe! Somebody needs to get that guy on the same page with everyone else. Then the Cobra Helicarrier shows up, apparently they have a Helicarrier, and it snatches up the Meteor, in a net, somehow. A handful of Joes pursue with jetpacks, including Snake Eyes and his wolf, and a fight sequence happens, like for a really long time. Then Destro takes Scarlet hostage and escapes, but a well-placed foot arrow blasts the control of his getaway ship and it begins to crash, to be continued. 